crazy. He ran in the, in the Masters race up in um, Glam Beach on on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. And I I think I was the oldest one there that was running. Uh, I, oh, I I wasn't Jim Bray there. I think he's 82, and then there was so I'm not sure if he was there or not. But you were, no, I don't think there, there were any. There were no men that started before me. Okay, well, congratulations then. Yeah, well, that was the old guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when um when I do get started, just let me know if I'm not doing something right. You know, I know how I chair the meetings at City, but. Uh, Mike does a great job, and I don't remember all the stuff he does. Recording in progress. Don't worry, we'll make sure that you're online. Okay. Well, my clock says four, so we'll go ahead and start the meeting of um, the HCOG board. Today is April 21st, and uh, do we? And we'll start with the roll call. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> Mayor Seaman. Here. Mayor Jones. Mayor Jones, did we lose her? Oh, I don't see her anymore. She must have fallen off. Yeah, I think she did. Um, Council Member Schaefer for the City of Arcata. Here. Council Member West. Here. Council Member Gordon Johnson. Here. Council Member Avis. Present. Supervisor Wilson. He's still connecting to audio. Okay. And Mayor Sue Long, alternate for Fortuna. Here. And again, is Mayor Jones back? Nope. Okay. Thank you. We have a quorum. Okay. You got Supervisor Wilson? I did. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So the first thing we need to do is adjourn uh, the HCOG board and convene as the policy advisory committee. So do we need a motion to do that or we just will? We just do that. Just do it. And then um, first thing on our agenda is a bike month proclamation. And Stevie, I heard you would read that for us. Yes, thank you, Mayor Seaman. I am happy to announce the proclamation of the Humboldt County Association of Governments Board of Directors recognizing May 2022 as Humboldt Bike Month. Whereas bicycling is part of the solution for addressing transportation needs, such as increasing mobility for youth and other people who do not drive, providing low-cost transportation options, and increasing access and connectivity while reducing traffic congestion. And whereas bicycle infrastructure takes up less land and costs less to build and maintain than automobile infrastructure. For instance, 12 bike spaces fit into one car parking space. And whereas bicycling is an economic driver in areas with commuter or recreational bike facilities. Study after study shows that locally based retail sales go up with bicycle improvements and that people spend more money at local businesses when they bike than when they drive. And whereas bicycle travel helps improve air quality and can help us achieve the goals of the Global Warming Solutions Act of 2006, which requires Californians to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050. And whereas bicycle commuting promotes physical activity, which leads to better fitness, lower healthcare costs, and improved mental health due to stress reduction. Employees who commute by bicycle on average have less sick days and higher productivity. And whereas the Humboldt County Association of Governments supports bicycle and pedestrian planning as a regional transportation priority and has adopted safe and sustainable targets to double the number of all trips made by walking, bicycling, and transit. And whereas HCOG supports member jurisdictions and their efforts to further regional bicycle infrastructure, including projects such as the Annie and Mary Trail and Eel River Trail. And whereas the month of May is National Bike Month, which promotes the bicycle as a means of transportation and recreation. And May is also clear, Clean Air Month, which promotes air quality. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of the Humboldt County Association of Governments 
finds increasing bicycle use is in the local, state, national, and global interest and proclaims May 2022 as Humboldt Bike Month and encourages member jurisdictions to adopt similar proclamations supporting Bike Month and urges citizens to participate in these and other activities that contribute to the health and vitality of the community and the environment. Yay, we always clap. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so do we have anybody to receive the proclamation or do you want to say anything about um, the bike day that is coming up? Yeah, the Bike Month Coalition has been hard at work uh, planning events. We are hosting the Bike Challenge, where you can sign up um, to with the team to log your miles throughout the month. We have a lot of local businesses that donated prizes. Um, we are having the Energizer stations at the Arcata and Eureka co-ops. And we're also doing a bike celebration at the Jefferson Center on Saturday, May 21st. And we'll have people tabling, um, mini tune-ups for your bicycle, and just generally um, appreciating all the, the benefits of cycling. So uh, everything is at bikemonthhumboldt.org. There's an events page there. Uh, you can also follow Bike Month Humboldt on Facebook. And uh, we have our events. Excellent. Well, I'm excited. I'm going to be at your event and I get to talk about City of Eureka's grant to do a new big bike plan. So um, that will be nice. Also, I'm sitting here in damp pants because I rode my bike to work today and I had to go home and I went just when the rain started <laughs> and there was a deluge and then it ended as soon as I got home. So I'm still, uh, every, it, my cool legs remind me that I rode my bike. Be happy. All right, so we will move on. Oh, do you have a question as? Yeah, it's, yeah. I wonder if I could make a minor uh, request on the proclamation, which is a delightful read and it's, it covers so many valuable uh, things. There's one, whereas it talks about employees having uh, less sick days. If we could change that to fewer sick days. I'm sure Adeline likes that as well. Thank you. <laughs> Do you guys get that? All right. Do we vote to accept a proclamation here? Or we just move on? Okay. All right. Then we'll just- That's a good question. I don't know if I've done a proclamation since I've been here. <laughs> we just read them at the city, but I believe yeah. in Arcata they actually vote on them. I thought I saw that before, maybe not. In the county we vote on okay. it as well. And we vote on them in Trinidad as well. Well, All right, let's take a vote. Let's do it then. Do I have a motion to accept this proclamation with the change as noted from council? So moved. Second. All and the right. motion's to support it. And uh, can we get a roll call vote, please? Supervisor Wilson? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Mayor Seaman? Yes. Mayor Jones? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes. Council Member West? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Avis? Aye. PAC Member Allstrand? Yes. Thank you, motion passes. All right, so now we are moving on to public comment on non-agenda items. Um, do we have anybody who would like to speak um, at this point of the meeting? I don't see any hands. Debbie, do you see anybody who would like to speak? Do you have anybody that's not on the? I don't see any raised hands for public comment. Okay. In that case, we will move on to the consent calendar. Um, did anybody want to pull anything from the consent calendar? I haven't heard of anything, but if not, then do we have a motion to approve? Motion I just to want to say I did. I did make a correction on the minutes and Debbie noted it in um, my email to her. It's just, it was a small word left out. The word is on the back but of the minutes of March meeting. But other than that, uh, I don't have a problem with the consent calendar. Excellent. So who was starting? Was that you, uh, uh, Council Member Johnson that was starting to approve it? I heard somebody make a motion. Yeah. yeah. Except the consent calendar. Thank you very much. Do I have a second? 
Second it. I'll Jack second it. Okay, um, and we have a motion and a second. Do we have, can we get a roll call vote, please? Supervisor Wilson? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. Mayor Seaman? Yes. Mayor Jones? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes. Council Member West? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Avis? Aye. PAC Member Allstrand? Yes. Thank you, motion passes. All right. Now um, we need to reconvene uh, the HCOG board. So this for this, we do need a motion. Um, do we have a motion to approve the PAC recommendations and reconvene as the HCOG board? So moved. Thank you very much. Council member Avis, second by anybody? I'll second. Mayor Jones. Okay. <laughs> All right, can we get a vote on this one, please? Yes, we have Supervisor Wilson. Affirmative. Mayor Long? Yes. Mayor Seaman? Yes. Mayor Jones? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes. Council Member West? Yes. Council Member Johnson? Yes. Council Member Avis? Aye. Pack Member Arroyo? I mean, I'm sorry, PAC member Allstrand. Yes. Thank you, motion passes. All right. Good, through the chair, I just, I, I think, um, I think moving from these two things doesn't require a vote in the future. I, I'm, I'm not sure that it's just at the direction of the, of the chair. Oh, really? I thought we always voted on it. Okay, thank you. And, <laughs> um, so we are moving on to item nine, which is the HCOG staff impact members report. And we'll start with the executive director's report. So Beth. Okay, so there was um, a very brief staff report uh, in, in this packet, um, specific about a working group we're forming. Um, I, I don't think we need any board direction on this. Um, this uh, was something we took to the TAC and they, they you know, agreed that this was a good idea to start a working group would be, um, this has to do with the use of e-bikes on our multi-use trails. Uh, so basically we were approached by Hank Seaman of the County of Humble, Donna Wood of the city of Eureka and Emily Sinkhorn of the city of Arcata all of them are involved in trail management and have uh, noticed that there's some user uh, conflicts between things like e-bikes and pedestrians, for example, using the trail. And um, they've also noted that there's kind of a, a lack of clear regulation or um, way to proceed about how, how these e-bikes should be managed. So they asked if HCOG would be willing to uh, dive into the issue a little bit and um, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and come up with a um, kind of a regional approach. So um, I just wanted the board to know because it is something that, you know, had, since we had it on the TAC agenda, it has garnered a little bit of interest. Um, you'll see that there was one letter that came in um, for the for the TAC uh, as a public comment that was included in the packet. And then uh, I also have one other public comment that I would like to read into the record right now about this item. Um, and that that is uh, from Elaine Weinreb. And it says, hello, HCOG, I noticed the comment letter from James Bell Bellerman concerning conflicting travel modes on the Hammond Trail, and I couldn't agree more. The trail as it is is simply too narrow to safely accommodate both bicyclists and walkers, many of whom have small children and dogs, and it can only get worse with e-bikes. As it is, walkers are continually being shoved aside to allow for the cyclists to pass. If there is a companionable group of walkers, they have, they have to spread themselves along the side of the trail and make room for cyclists. Most bicyclists are very courteous and aware of the disruption they are causing, but traditional bicycles go at, at 10 miles per hour or less, while e-bikes can go up to 28 miles per hour. The additional speed is akin to automobile traffic and does not belong on a trail whose purpose is to provide a safe place for people to walk. Although I, I used to enjoy walking the Hammond Trail, it's becoming stressful and unpleasant experience. Please consider widening it to allow room for cyclists to pass without disrupting pedestrians. Um, so I think, you know, we are seeing that there's uh, a lot of interest in, in, you know, kind of getting to the bottom of this issue. And in the staff report, I included um, those who have volunteered to serve on the committee. So um, just, again, wanted to give the board a heads up that this committee 
committee was forming. Um, it'll be like, it's not a formal committee, it's a working group uh, at the staff level, but I will report back to the TAC and to the board as we reach milestones or if we need any action for um, you know any approaches that are being considered. Um, so with that, uh, I have a few other updates, but maybe just take comments on this piece first um, before we move on. So you may have uh, council member West. I, um, I'd like to be involved if possible. So if, if they could, if I could be contacted, I appreciate that. I, I do write a lot and I'd like, I think I see the same problem. So I'd like to help out. And uh, Mayor Long, did I see you start to put your hand up? Okay, and okay, council member Avis. Thank you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, pedestrians have rights of way over bicycles, which are considered vehicles and must obey the same rules of the road as automobiles. And that would be true for e-bikes as well. So in terms of standing, and uh, when you come down with the regulations, uh, you can bear that in mind that pedestrians do have an inherent right of the road that, that precedes bicycles for who has to give way. Okay, that made me a bad guy, I know. Any other comments on this? Sure, I just, um, I think we, we just do have to be aware that um, the bice, bicycle community is a strong purveyor of these uh, infrastructures that we've been promoting and putting together. And so I just wanna make sure that we're not having, that this isn't a battle um, and, and, and really uh, figuring out ways for coexistence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, we've been we've been building a lot of this infrastructure and and pushing and and having this stuff be part of the of our of our transportation infrastructure. We get funded because it's part of our transportation infrastructure and non motorized transportation infrastructure. And I think it's important that we um, make sure that that's that's maintained in in these um, in, in in these facilities that we're both building and maintaining. Thanks. Yeah, if if I could, um, thank you. May I, through the chair, can I respond to that really quickly? Of course. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it's clear that it um, the purpose of forming this group was really to address the the e bikes and other sort of emerging technologies. I think you may have seen them. I think they're called one wheels. They go super fast. They're kind of like a board that's got one wheel in the middle, and they they go flying. Um, but but I think the intent of bringing it forward was one not to not to necessarily at all regulate you know traditional bike use. Um, I, I you know I think we see comments about that, and and that may you know kind of evolve, and, and that discussion will come up. But I think it is really that question of like what is mo like what is a motorized vehicle and is it e-bike part of that or is it not is it you know and so um i think those were the the concerns primarily that the trail managers were bringing forward is you know if we put up a sign that says no motorized vehicle you know does that mean an e-bike doesn't go on the trail um so so just kind of sorting through some of that I, I just to just to be clear about what i think the intent of the um you know the managers that brought the issue forward were, were trying to get at so before we go to public comment, anybody else on the uh, HCOG board want to say anything? All right, then I will open it up to public comment. I see that uh, Mr. Mr. Fisk has a comment. So um, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, just a couple of things on that. Um, I wanted to mention that I, I recently read a study on e-bike usage and um, perhaps surprisingly, uh, it found that well, e-bike riders do ride faster on average than um, conventional bike riders. It's not as much faster as you would think. Um, it's really only uh, a couple miles an hour faster on average. So I, I really think that um, I think this is an issue, but um, in in my mind, uh, it's an issue largely because we designed a lot of class one trails in heavily used areas um, and just assumed that bikes and peds could really mix freely. Um, and I, I think that it's sort of as, as the comment from Elaine Weinreb pointed out, I think it's maybe it's being highlighted by um, some new technologies and more heavy use of the trails. But, um, but I hope that we will look at um, our trail design standards going forward. And um, I also wanted to just 
volunteer um, CRTP to um, serve on that uh, working group if if you're looking for members. All right. Is there anybody else who wanted to make public comment on this? I don't see any other hands raised in public comment. All right. Thank you very much. Um, all right. It, I, is that all wrapped up, Beth? Or do you have anything else to finish it? Um, that that close. I think that's good for the for the e-bike uh, working group. I do have just a couple other announcements and updates under my executive director's report. Uh, so the first is just wanted to report back to all of you. So uh, much like we did last month, talking about um, in-person meetings, hybrid meetings, we took those same questions to the SS TAC and the TAC. So just to kind of report back on that, the TAC would like to go hybrid for as long as possible, and the SS TAC wants to remain virtual as long as possible. So we're looking to accommodate both of those those committees in, um, you know, for as, for as long as we can with their, um, with their preferred method of meeting. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to note that I did give a presentation to the city of Trinidad, to the city council there at the request of council member West. I had a wonderful time presenting and um, really, yeah, just enjoyed it and was able to hopefully give a useful presentation. Would you like to say something, council member? Um, I, I just like to add that this was a terrific talk. Our our council was thrilled by what we heard, and I really recommend that if you get a chance to have her come up and just give a nice talk, it really opens up the an understanding of what HCOG is doing. And was I think the people, everybody listening was interested, but I think our uh, council really learned a lot. And we're very happy that Beth came up. So I really appreciate it. Hope you'll do the same for your council. Boy, that's great. Thank you very much for, for initiating that. Yeah, happy to do it anywhere, you know, always looking to kind of spread the word about HCOG. So please, if, if you would like a presentation, let me know. We'll get on okay. get on the agenda. And um, I do, you know, go over the big picture of HCOG, but then I am able to tailor it for your city um, or jurisdiction. So, um, you know, that it kind of helps to walk through like, you know, what is what money has come to your jurisdiction from HCOG right. over the years um, and other and other programs as well. Uh, and then the final announcement I wanted to mention was that uh, through our REAP grant, this is the housing, the Regional Early Action Planning for Housing grant, that uh, we have released a NOFO, and this is for housing stories. So this is looking to prepare a multimedia catalog of, of really different artistic ways to express the housing need in our community that we can use as educational outreach to help inform others about the housing crisis that we are in. So uh, it is on our website that you can find the NOFA for this and uh, um, the applications are due May 13th. The maximum award available is $7,500. we are hoping to um, get smaller ones than that too and kind of do a big compilation, but this would be things, um, art, um, videos, a play, um, you know, really just looking for creative minds to um, think of all different ways to talk about housing and help uh, educate our community about the housing crisis. So I want to make sure everyone knew that that opportunity is currently out there and that's um, that's the end of my announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have anything they need to say before we move on? All right, then we will move on to the Caltrans reports. Uh, yeah, yeah, hi. Um, Jeff is here today to talk about Broadway, but before that, I wanted to give a quick update on the last chance grade. Um, I have an update from the project manager that work continues to be on schedule and um, Senator McGuire will be hosting a virtual public open house on May 25th at 6.30 p.m. And Caltrans is working towards scheduling a date for the next mitigation workshop, which will be sometime late summer or early fall. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Jeff, you have a presentation for us? I was double muted. Can you guys hear me all right now? Now we can, yeah. I thought that was a, um, I just, a powerful I to be, Sorry, I didn't catch that. What was that? I said it seemed like a power silence, like you were going to have a nice long pause so that we all paid attention before you started. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't planned that way. I just uh, had a faux pas with the double mute. But anyway, um, I just wanted to give a quick update, a couple quick items. Um, I know typically uh, Beth will put me on an agenda for an update like on Reef Arcata, 
um, but I just wanted to fill in here and take a couple minutes. So one is uh, we are still working on arriving at an engineer's estimate and final design on the Indianola <clears throat> undercrossing project. Um, I do plan by the next board meeting to have some cost information by then. Um, so uh, I, I, I plan on attending the next board meeting to, to discuss that. Um, the other item I wanted to quickly mention and uh, have the opportunity with today's board meeting is the topic of our uh, Broadway pop-up demonstrations that we're planning to deploy. And I'm not sure um, who's in the loop on, on this or what these are, but they're essentially um, temporary implementation of improvements to uh, test features on roadways prior to actually, you know, constructing them. So um, kind of piggybacking and following up on the Eureka Broadway multimodal corridor plan, which looked at multimodal connectivity, safety, congestion, and kind of creating a sense of place along Broadway and in Eureka. Um, there's been a lot of efforts, projects uh, at Caltrans and studies to look at complete streets improvements in the kind of more urban and downtown area of Eureka on 101. Um, we've had kind of an expanded uh, project development team, including a lot of um, external stakeholders, not internal to Caltrans in that process. And that's been really rewarding and, and a great process to get that um, external feedback and, and uh, involvement in project development. Um, as kind of part of all of that effort um, and then developing ideas for complete street scope and improvements on Broadway, kind of a new, um, I guess, uh, process that I've seen other agencies use. I don't believe we've utilized it. I did hear that Humboldt County was maybe going to be utilizing it in McKinleyville, but is actually testing actual improvements, temporarily installing them, seeing how they function, allowing the public to interact with them, uh, getting feedback on those improvements and, you know, being able to tweak and iterate and um, use that data to inform what maybe we might actually build in a, in a final scenario or with an actual construction project. Um, so we are planning to do this along Broadway. Uh, the limits of, of these measures will be from uh, where the Papa and Barkley business is, the old Kmart, and then heading uh, northbound all the way to about the 4th and 5th Street couplet on Broadway. Um, the, the various types of temporary uh, changes that we'll be making will include kind of four different um, kind of core components. Um, one of those being traffic uh, calming measures such as lane closures with uh, some of the acceleration, deceleration lanes that we have uh, in Broadway now. Uh, we'll be closing some of those. Um, kind of as a, a measure to provide that traffic calming and more tightening of the roadway cross section um, for vehicles to, to kind of uh, have that traffic calming effect to slow down through this these areas. Um, a second one will be curb extensions, also known as bulb outs at some of the intersections, shorten some of those tra uh, those crossing distances for pedestrians, and also tighten up the cross section, provide that traffic calming um, element to the roadway. Uh, we'll also be looking at uh, median refuges for potential future uh, pedestrian crossings. So these will not be actual crossings to be utilized by pedestrians during the pop-up demonstration, but they will be small segments of median closed so that we can understand how vehicles will interact with those median refuge closures. Um, there's a lot of feedback that we need to get from that, namely, you know, how will emergency vehicles respond with that? Because now a lot of the emergency response vehicles utilize the two-way left turn lane to make it, you know, through Eureka when uh, during times of congestion or just to avoid vehicles. And so that'll allow us the opportunity to have that dialogue with emergency services and just see how vehicles in general interact with them. Um, and then the fourth and final uh, element that we'll be testing will be a class four bikeway um, with an actual physical barrier between a bike lane and the number two or, you know, slow travel lane, also known as a slow, slow lane. Um, this will not be a physical barrier such as a, a concrete, you know, K rail barrier, anything of that nature, but will likely be some sort of a um, flexible bollard of some, of some type that will be temporary. Um, and that 
class four bikeway is not planned to be installed for the entirety of Broadway uh, during this project demonstration, but uh, there will be a segment of Broadway that we're planning to do that on. Um, there is a, a draft and a layout of where all of these things, uh, temporary improvements are proposed. Uh, we will have a website um, that will include that map and all these locations and all that information. So I will definitely be sharing that with the group soon. We are also planning on having a public meeting to talk about all this information. And, and once we have that public meeting, all the information I'm kind of discussing now that's in draft form uh, will be final. So uh, you'll all definitely get an invite and, and uh, become aware of, of when that will take place. But uh, we're still in the planning phase on that. We are hoping to deploy and do all of this um, within the next few weeks. So I expect that you'll hear more information about it soon. But um, anyway, I think the intent really is to, you know, try to install things on a temporary basis to get data from them and learn on how the community interacts with them and get feedback so that um, the actual improvements that we build, uh, which there is a, I know there's a lot of uh, interest in the types of improvements that this pop-up demonstration is gonna be testing. And so I think it's really important that we get it right not just from a um, complete streets advocate uh, point of view, but also just the community vehicle users and just having a good balance for all users on the facility to be sure that uh, we're meeting everyone's needs. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that that's coming. There'll be more information soon, but uh, just to put it on your radar. All right, well, it looks like we have a couple of questions. So we'll start with Mayor Jones. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Okay, hi, um, those those really sound exciting because safety is so important along Broadway in Eureka. I'm, I'm really appreciative. I'm writing all these things down because they're so great. Um, but my question is about another area of 101 and that is just uh, about a, a mile or two south of Arcata. Uh, Caltrans has a bridge project going on and has been going on for quite a while. And I was wondering um, if you can give us any update as to when that project might be completed. Yeah, so um, I'm sure you're probably referencing our Jacoby Creek replacement project, which is in the uh, southbound direction there currently where you have to make a little jog into the median. Okay, so um, yes, that so that project just kind of has one final stage left. Uh, it's a big stage in it to actually move our bridge that you're driving on now in its temporary location, which is uh, located in the median. We will be uh, what we call jack and slide, picking that bridge up and moving it to its final location where you previously were driving when you were driving straight and not having to do a little S, S curve through that section of highway. So. Um, right now, the project is in suspension due to our environmental work windows. Um, those work windows will lift, I believe, they'll, they lift in June. I am not certain right now if it's the 1st of June or the middle of June. I don't have that in front of me at this time, but it's June nonetheless. Um, so in June, the, that project will come out of uh, winter suspension. And last I heard was sometime in July was the tentative plan to jack and slide that, that bridge into its final location. And I, I, I know like Mike, I went to the Manila Community Services District, gave them an update um, in the past about it. And I'll, we'll do that again, because I know there was a lot of obviously interest and concern there with, um, with traffic control potentially going over to 255, because that was the detour but the closure of the highway that will occur will be um, at night and just for a few hours. Uh, the actual plan is to close the highway for uh, a few hours in the middle of the night just to test that the bridge will move as it's expected to move and planned to move. And then we'll reopen the highway by morning. And then um, shortly after, I think a week or two weeks later, we'll do the actual move with another um, few hour uh, nighttime closure, move the bridge, and then by the time you wake up, um, the bridge will be in its 
and its location. So um, that's the plan, but uh, tentatively that's scheduled to happen in July. So that, that project is will be near completion here soon. Thank you. Thank you, Council, Thank you Jeff. Council Member. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Council Member Avis. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Um, I agree with Mayor Jones about safety on the corridor um, along Broadway, how important that is. And the traffic calming methods seem really good. What role does the posted speed limit play uh, either currently or down the road um, as we make efforts to uh, bring speeds down uh, by vehicles to provide greater safety? So, uh, Stephen, I missed the first part of your question. Did you ask what people's role was in, in accomplishing that? No, I understand that the the, um, uh, the traffic calming measures are to encourage people to slow down on their own, narrowing lanes, putting ballers out, things like that. What role do the, does a posted speed limit play uh, at some point in this? Because I think it's 40 miles an hour at this point. Is that considered to be re reduced in order to um, provide more clarity as to what the, what the speed limit is preferred to be when you've got multimodal traffic flowing in the same direction. Yeah. So, and San Francisco's yeah. looking at, at limiting some of their speed limits on some of their busier routes, again, for the same reason to minimize bicycle and pedestrian conflicts. Yeah. So, and this, this topic comes up quite often. Um, the the vehicle speed is uh, as i'm sure some of you know is, is set by the vehicle code right. and i think you know the kind of loose or real um basic definition is it's the 85th percentile in terms of the speed the of vehicles travel got it uh, so that's really how those speeds are, are dictated and how they're posted okay. um so at this at this time there are no plans to um reduce speed limits outside of the normal vehicle code that sets them now. That's not to say that, you know, that conversation or topic couldn't come up or, or need to come up at a, at a future date. But at this time, uh, the focus of the pop-up demonstration and of the complete streets projects we're looking at is solely looking at um, geometric changes. Um, well, I, I should say maybe not geometric changes because we're not really planning on changing the alignment of the highway but um, implementing traffic calming and safety and complete streets improvements to enhance the safety for non-motorized users of the facility. At this time, the plan and scope is not, is not looking at the um, reduction of the speed, but maybe what measures we can implement that might um, naturally cause that to occur, um, you know, by, by providing a more, um, mm -hmm. you know, focused and narrow looking route as opposed to something that's more expansive and wider looking, which, you know, tends to yield, you know, higher speed. Exactly. Um, great. Thank you very much. Plan at this time. Mm -hmm. Super. That's You're great. Welcome. All right. Supervisor Wilson, you have a question or comment? Yes, it's not. It's more of a comment. I, I don't believe that the you know the new legislation, state legislation on the 85 percentile, has changed the requirements around that. So, I want to make sure that if you don't aren't updated on that, that you, that we get updated on that in terms of um, that's not as strict of a requirement anymore. And um, so that was passed last year. So I just want to make sure that you know, we're not as trapped by that um, 85 percentile. It used to be we had to be really afraid for, to, to do a speed study because then automatically maybe the speed limits would go up in a location, but that's not, that's not, that's not so much of a thing anymore uh, due to the legislation. So maybe Colin has some information on that. Great comment, Mike. Sorry, before we go to public comment, I'll just uh, see if there's anybody else on the HCOG board who has any comments to say. All right, if not, then we will um, open the floor to public comment. So Colin Fisk. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think Supervisor Wilson was referring to AB 43 um, and uh, that my understanding is that um, 
that's a little bit in flux at the moment because they're updating the MUTCD hopefully soon with um, new guidance based on that. But uh, I would definitely encourage uh, Caltrans to take a look at that because I think it might affect the Broadway corridor based on the, the language of the bill. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and, and I just want to thank Caltrans for their continuing work on Broadway and um, hope that we can, you know, that these pop-up demonstrations are, are fruitful and that um, we can then get uh, quickly in place uh, permanent safety improvements. I also wanted to point out on that other project on the safety corridor, um, I've noticed uh, anecdotally that that sort of unintentional chicane that's produced by moving the bridge over has really slowed down traffic a bit and uh, maybe we should just leave it there. <laughs> An un unintended, un or uh, unintentional uh, uh, effects, I guess, but um... Yeah, and I, I guess just to your comment, Colin, I wanted to thank you for uh, your involvement on the PDT with all the complete, complete streets efforts uh, that we're developing. So it's it's nice to have uh, engagement on, on your end and all of your colleagues and, and other stakeholders that uh, have been interfacing with us. So that's been, I know, a real positive experience for us as well. Nice. Mayor Jones. I just wanted to say I happened to drive Highway 55 next to Manila and Samoa. And um, the speed limit there is 55. It's faster than the 101 safety corridor. And it's only a one, it's only a one lane on either way road. So if you get someone that wants to go really fast behind you and then they try to pass you, which oftentimes is not safe. So anyway, um, my point is what that uh, <laughs> drive slow, watch the road. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll I'll make one uh, I'll make one other comment here. Um, I'm not well versed in AB 43, which Colin mentioned from from Mike's comment. So um, I guess as an action item for myself, I'll, I'll I'm going to be communicating with our traffic safety group who kind of owns this information and this topic, so I can better understand what uh maybe what flexibility we might have into the future because uh you know maybe it's another another tool in the toolbox to be able to use in situations like this so not making any commitments but i'd like to get more versed in it and understand what what our options might be um, when we have these conversations i know this topic and question does come up quite often so all right anything else Thank you very much for your reports, um, both Tasha and Jeff. And we are moving on to PAC member reports. Do we have anybody who has a report? Do you know of any, Beth? Do we have anything lined up for that? All right. Then before we adjourn, I just want to say uh, Stevie sent out a press release for the free road signs. And boy, have people been taking advantage of it. I think we're down to maybe two boxes at the Muni. Um, I'm gonna call the county and see if they have any more, but if you know people who want signs, tell them to call soon because they're flying out the door. So thank you so much for your efforts. Really appreciate it. And with that, I will go ahead and adjourn. See you guys all in a month. Thank you. Bye-bye. And then Beth and Debbie, I will be in to sign something on Monday. Debbie, is that what you said you needed from me? Yes, Monday would work great. Okay. Um, we'll be in the office between 8.30 and 5. All right, I'll see All right. you on Monday. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye.